Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents Victor Herbert's operetta, Eileen, starring Cecil Kellaway, Irene Manning, Clark Dennis, and your host, Gordon McRae. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Well, the top of the evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Gordon McRae, ringing up the curtain on our St. Patrick's Day offering, Victor Herbert's romantic Irish operetta, Eileen. <laughs> In the character of Sean in tonight's story, we have the man nominated for an Academy Award for his fine performance as the leprechaun in The Luck of the Irish, Cecil Kellaway. The lovely musical comedy prima donna Irene Manning plays Eileen. Clark Dennis adds his lilting Irish tenor voice to the role of Dinny, and yours truly plays Captain Barry O'Day. And now here is Cecil Kellaway in the role of Sean to tell you the story of Eileen. Eileen begins like any Irish love story must begin with Once Upon a Time. So once upon a time in Ireland, there was a boy and there was a girl. And I'm going to tell you what happened to them just as I saw them in my own eyes. It was in the days of the Irish rebellion. And I was uh, <clears throat> engaged somewhat illegally with a band of smugglers. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can hear them singing now as they march back from the sea. And well, now, uh, I'm a bit of a frog in my throat tonight, but in those days I could sing so that it would make uh, your throat ache to hear me. Well, to be on with this story, on a certain morning, we returned from a very profitable smuggling expedition. We stopped at the Black Bullion for a bit of cheer, and there in the back room we found the hero of my story, Captain Barry O'Day, a fine, handsome brother. Sean, Dinny, how are you? Ah, you're looking fine, lads. Barry, where have you come from? What are you hiding out back here for? Come outside and see the lads. Well, right now there's a price in pounds in my head, and the English are at my heels. Well, then, what are you doing in these parts? Dinny, I hope to raise some new recruits in Ireland and take them to join a French army under General Hosh. He's planning to invade Ireland from the west and march on Dublin. Hooray, hooray, you can count on us, Barry, my boy. (laughs) Ah, lads, it's so good to be home again. To smell Irish earth and to look at Irish sky. To hear the voices that speak with the music of Ireland in them. Ah, you don't know what it can mean until you're away from it. When far from the land that I'm proud to call my own, I repine till the heart of me is sore. And I dream of the past and the happiness I've known While my soul seems to whisper for and o'er Tell me when shall I again see Ireland There's no other spot I know that's half so fair I am lost 
longing for my home, my silent, for my heart, my hope, my loved ones are there. Tell me when shall I again see Ireland? There's no other spot I know. Longing for my home, my silent, for my heart. Good to be home. Who is it? It's me, Rosie. Ah, come in, lad. Can I be getting you a bit more breakfast, Mr. O'Day? Well, thank you, Rosie. Will you join me, lads? Of course we will. Rosie, me darling. Well, what is it now, Dinny? I picked up a necklace last night that's just the color of your eyes. And it is yours for a kiss. Thank you kindly, Dinny Doyle, but I have a necklace. I'll be in with your breakfast as quickly as possible, Captain O'Day. Thank you, Rosie. You're not using the right approach for that one, Dinny. Take it in your arms. Huh? Don't ask her. Take her. Carry her off. Oh, no. I tried that already. And I've a scar I'll carry to me grave. <laughs> well, then, Dinny, take it in your arms gently. And say, oh, Rosie, you're named for the flower that's justly famed for more of sweetness and of loveliness than any bud that blows. Yeah, I've spoken like a true Irishman. But if you take my advice, Denny, you'll sing it. Sing it, huh? Well, I could sing it better than I could say it. Although you're young and very small, you've no fear of men at all. You just let them smile and get them all to think they've won your heart. Try to steal a kiss But when that has gone amiss Each one cries and lies and sighs I love you so My little Irish rose The flower that's justly famed for more of sweetness and of loveliness than any bud that blows. But sure there's a thorn in my heart when you are scorning it, for it is your love I'm dreaming. I couldn't do it better, Miss Harry. Nor could I. Have you ever been in love, Barry? No, Denny. I don't intend to fall in love. I have only time for one love right now, and that's Ireland. I've only time for one love now. Ireland. 
I never forget the day I heard Barry speak those words. It was the same day that he met Eileen, mine close know. And I'll tell you exactly what and how it came about. Diddy Doyle and I were just about to leave Barry when there was a great commotion. We all rushed out to the window. And we saw that the mob was surrounding a carriage. That looks like Lady Maud's carriage, Sean. It does indeed. Do you two know Lady Maud? Yeah. For two seasons, Maud. I met her in France. She's a fine, brave woman. And she's all for the cause. And then the mob's, the mob's giving her a bad time. Come on. But she... You can't go out, Barry. Never mind, people. And I'll have to chance it. Are you with me? We're with you. Come on. Don't let them pass. Listen to me. Listen to me. I am not an enemy. I am an Irish woman. Let me through here. Let me through. Get back before they close. Stand back. Stand back. Ladies, will you permit me to help you down? Barry O'Day. You in Ireland. Yes. And you know why. Come. I'll see you safely to the top. Oh, my... My niece is in the carriage. She fainted. We were driving along when these ruffians stopped us. Well, I'll carry your niece in. Who are you to push yourself up there? What traitor is this amongst us? I'll tell you who I am. I'm Barry O'Day. I'm back to work for the cause. Are you with me? Yes, we are. It looked never so bright. Oh, man, we'll fight. That's the spirit I love for the time. Is at home. Glad triumphant hour. May the tyrant's power now and forevermore be broken. Hearts and sorrow tried. Beat with loyal pride. Mind our slogan here in Schlantigal go bra. You must do something. You're in great danger. We passed some English troops less than a mile down the road. Come. We'll go into the Black Bull and talk a moment. I'll carry your niece. I'll, I'll hold back the clerk. <laughs> That's the day I'll never forget. When I dismissed the crowd and walked outside, and there was the two of them. Barry and it had his arm around Eileen. He was holding a glass to her lips. He was looking at her. Yes, say how he was looking at her. He was looking at her like she was the first woman who walked the earth. Maybe it's just because I'm Irish. But I swear there was music in that room as she opened her eyes and saw Barry O'Day for the first time. And maybe it's because I'm Irish that the words they said seemed to mean an uncommon lot more than what they said. There. You'll feel better now. Who are you? Oh, I'm... Uh... Uh, this is an old friend of mine, Eileen. I've just... Oh, I've just hired him for my groom. You've what? It's the only way the English are coming. I see. Uh, I can stand by myself now, thank you. Uh, what was your name? Uh, James. Thank you for helping me, James. Oh, it is a pleasure, my lady. Company! Halt! Steve, all right. Quiet, everyone. Let me handle this. Well, Lady Estabrook, this is a surprise. Colonel Lester, how nice to see you again. Have these Irish vagabonds annoyed you? Oh, dear, no. We just stopped for some refreshment, but we really must get home. Come, James. One moment, please. I'm hunting for a fugitive. A fugitive? An Irish patriot named Barry O'Day, a very dangerous man. This man is your servant, you say? Oh, yes. My lady's most obedient servant. Then I will not detain your ladyship. <laughs> Thank you, Colonel. Come, everyone. We want to reach the castle by nightfall. Is the position of the footman still open, your ladyship? Footman? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, of course. Come along, Sean. Come along. (laughs) 
And that's how it all began. With Barry and Eileen and Lady Maud and myself riding along through the bright summer day, singing like we were the angels, and everyone we passed joining in. May the tyrants fall now and forevermore be broken. Hearts and sorrow tried, beat with loyal pride, mind the smoke and tear and slant to Galdabar. That triumphant hour, may the tyrants fall now and forevermore be broken. Hearts and sorrow tried. You know how quick most of us are to take a second look at a train going by, but not many of us, if any, ever glance at what's under the train, the track on which it runs. To most of us, as a matter of fact, today's tracks look about like those we have always seen, but they only look alike. Actually, today's track does its work of supporting and guiding the trains far better, far more efficiently than the track of even a few years ago. Now, take, for example, the rail. To the naked eye, today's rail looks about like the rail of 20 years ago. But today's rail is not only heavier, it's better designed. This means that it's stronger and smoother riding. And that's only part of the story of improvement. For it's made of better steel, it's tougher, more durable, less likely to break. And what is true of rail is true of every other part of the structure of the track. To produce such results, many men, many industries, many institutions have cooperated in widespread and long-continued research. At the very focus of the effort has been the American Railway Engineering Association. This professional society is made up of men who are primarily responsible for the construction and maintenance of roadway, bridges, and buildings of the railroads. This week, the American Railway Engineering Association is observing its 50th anniversary. For 30 years, it has served also as a technical division of the Association of American Railroads. In the half century of its life, research has been its field. The far-reaching railroad industry, its proving ground. Efficient public transportation, its goal. And all of us, the beneficiaries of its work. And now back to Victor Herbert's operetta, Eileen. Starring Cecil Kellaway, Irene Manning, Clark Dennis, and your host, Gordon McRae. And here is Cecil Kellaway as Sean to continue our story. Well, here I am again. I suppose you're wondering what happened to Barry and Eileen. Well, now I'll tell you all about it. Barry had to remain Lady Maud's groom. Just as long as the English were in the vicinity of Lady Maud's estate. Eileen looked at Barry, and Barry looked at Eileen. But never a word passed between them except, Drive me here, saddle my horse, do this errand. Yes, my lady. I'll be happy to my lady at once, my lady. Ah, and the whole it was disappointing. Until one night, I saw Barry leaning against a tree, all by himself. I'm in love, I'm in love with a slip of a girl, and if I should be merry or sad, I don't know, for my heart is a fire and my head is a world, yet I'm suffering for her. I'm glad that tis so. Eileen, but my heart you have captured. Tis you that I love. You are adore. My soul with your charm is enraptured. But my 
heart you have not heard Tis you that I love You I adore With your charms I'm enraptured stood there singing to the night. You could hear all the women that have fallen in love with Irishmen through the ages sighing behind him. Faith, no, no, no woman can ever resist this, you know that now, don't you? Well, within a few years, Eileen gave every indication of a young lady whose resistance was going to the way of every other woman. I was in the garden picking flowers when along came Lady Maud and Eileen. Aunt Maud, is James married? No, I don't think so. Oh, Sean, is James married? Is he? I don't think so, ma'am. Hey, look, did I know of. Does he interest you, Eileen? Interest me? Oh, good gracious, no. How could he possibly interest me? No, well, he could interest me if I were your age. Oh, well, he's overbearing. He's, he's rude. He's, he's pushing. And, and I don't think he's a gentleman. Oh, no, you've gone too far. You have indeed. Call him anything you like, but a gentleman he is. You forget yourself. No, Eileen. I think you forgot yourself. Sean, what was that old song we used to sing around the castle? Remember? I remember it well, my lady. Someday, some way, to you and me I know, there will surely come that happy home. Just the heaven here to belong. Sure then, but that's when we'll show the moral the story. Is the gentleman I'll be when you're a lady. <laughs> you're right, both of you. I haven't been talking like much of a lady, have I? I, I don't know what's the matter with me lately. I. Excuse me. Well, so that's the way the wind blows. It seems to be, my lady. Eileen ran down to the stables. He got on a horse, a rode off. Lady Maud had asked Barry not to let Eileen ride alone, so he followed her. It was about a mile from the house that Eileen's horse flew her. Eileen. Oh, Eileen. Darling, are you all right? Yes, I I think so. Did you... Did you call me darling? Eh? Well, now, now where would the likes of me get off calling the likes of you darling? Darling. Who are you? I'm an Irishman. Now that I think of it, there's an Irishman the English are all hunting. A certain Barry O'Day. Yes, my lady. How clever it would be for a man like that to take a job somewhere in plain sight. The English have never seen him, and the Irish wouldn't betray him. How clever if he were to become a groom. And if he were to become a groom? What a proud day it is for Ireland to have men like you, Captain O'Day. Rode back from the ride silently, each full of questions and unspoken dreams. And that night, it was Miss Eileen that I saw leaning up against the tree all by herself, singing to the moon. For when love at last is waking, like the dawn of a beautiful day, with a cream. Sunrise breaking as the shadows glide away. Then the heart no longer lonely, but enthralled by a rapture divine, whispers love, I love you. Oh, 
Pretty good idea how Eileen and Valley were feeling about one another. But the course of true love never did run smooth. And the very next afternoon, I brought Lady Maud word of the approach of Colonel Lester and the English soldiers. They're close to the house, you say, Sean? They are that, my lady. Oh, I've no time to get in the horse. No, but they'd be after you in a minute, Barry. Well, they don't know what I look like. Well, they wouldn't have much trouble in guessing if they saw you on a horseback. Well, we'll just have to bluff it out, Barry. I'm afraid it's a little late for that, oh. Lady Maud. Colonel Lester. So, this is Barry O'Day. I should have known when you asked for that position as footman there was something in the wind. Strange, I thought you'd be younger. Is it me you're looking at with an accusing eye? You think A man your age. I'm not. You're not what? I'm not as old as you think I am. (laughs) (laughs) I'm as old and I'm as young as Ireland. And I've lived for Ireland. And now the time to die... At least there's glory in the thought that I shall die for Ireland. This is outrageous. Barry O'Day, in the name of the king, I arrest you. Oh, no. No, no. Weep not, my lady. He is going in the manner that Barry O'Day would choose to go. Oh, this is monstrous. Someone has betrayed us. It was you, James. I'm sure of it. You have betrayed us. My lady, you wound me. I have betrayed no one, on my word. Your word. You're a traitor, a disgrace to Ireland. Get off my premises at once. Gladly. Just a moment. Perhaps you'll permit me to use this man's services. Well, he's no good to Ireland. Take him if you want him. You know the way to Dublin? Like I know my prayers. Then you shall take this dispatch for me. But Colonel Lester sent for me, I tell you. I've got to see you. What's that? Oh, it's Humpy Grogan. I sent for him to identify O'Day, but that's taken care of now. Very well, James, be off. Thank you kindly, Colonel. And goodbye. I'll drop you all a line from Dublin. Captain O'Day. Yes, sir. In recognition of your bravery, your eyes shall not be bandaged. Thank you for your courtesy, Colonel Lester. And you yourself shall give the word to fire. That's very kind of you. You won't mind, I hope, if I stutter a bit. (laughs) (laughs) But I tell you, I could see the Colonel. Colonel Lester. Colonel Lester. Get out of here, Humpy Grogan. How dare you come into my parlour uninvited? Uh, mercy, your ladyship, mercy. But I just saw Barry O'Day riding away. Impossible. This is Barry O'Day. Him? Him? This one? Don't you refer to me as this one. This is... Why, this is Sean O'Sullivan. He's from the village. I'm telling you the truth. Barry O'Day is riding away from me this minute. So, Lady Maud, you have outwitted me. Well, we'll see, my lady. The English know how to ride, too. You can go, Sean, whatever your name is. The name is Sean O'Sullivan. In the commotion, I stole up to Eileen's room. I knocked at the door. Come in. Oh, it's you, Sean. I have a note for you from Barry. From Barry? Aye, he's gone. The English? Aye, the English. But have no fear. They'll not catch him. He gave the, the note to me last night. I may be living in a kind of sudden life way, he said. And if I do, give this letter to Eileen. Oh. Well, aren't you going to read it? Oh, yes, of course, Sean. What does he say? He says, My dear, my dearest, 
At the end of the letter, he says, Wait for me. I will return. And you? You'll wait? I'll wait. For 50 years, the American Railway Engineering Association has been bringing to bear the combined observation and experience of men in the field and men in the laboratory upon the problem of building, maintaining, and improving railroad tracks and roadway. Fifty years ago, when the association was born, there was grave fear that heavy traffic on the railroads had about reached the limit of capacity of the track structure. Today, however, the railroads are carrying traffic which averages four times as much per mile, and the tracks are carrying the load even more efficiently now than they were then. Such things are not the result of any one improvement. They represent the combined effort of many. But let's take a look at just one. Improvements in the treatment and the handling of cross ties have been so great in the past 50 years as to multiply the average life of a tie at least three times to railroads, this means that the cost of tie renewals is at least 1,000 per mile per year less than it would be if they still had to use ties at the rate of 50 years ago. And to the nation, it means conservation of the timber necessary to produce 70 or 80 million cross ties a year. This is just another example of the result of research in railroad roadway, much of it carried on through the American Railway Engineering Association. <laughs> The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification.
And now, back to Victor Herbert's operetta, Eileen, starring Cecil Kellaway, Irene Manning, Clark Dennis, and your host, Gordon McRae. And here is Cecil Kellaway as Sean to continue the story. And now, the boy was in love with the girl, and the girl was in love with the boy. But he was gone. And I'm the only man alive that can rightly tell what happened to him. There was a big party at the castle that night. Everyone you might be interested in at all at all was there, except Humpy Grogan and Barry. At least, no one thought Barry was there. But Eileen was walking alone in the garden when suddenly... Did I hear you call me darling? Darling. Barry. Oh, Barry, what are you doing here? Oh, my darling. My darling. I couldn't leave without holding you in my arms. Without a kiss to send me on my way. Oh, you should never have come here. Colonel Lester's men are everywhere. I'm sure they're not at Lady Maud's party. Eileen, I'll be coming back for you. As soon as we've won. I'll be waiting. Barry. Barry, my boy. Yes, Sean. I've got all the lads together like you told me. Oh, that's good. Are you with me, lads? Yes. You're leaving now? Yes. My blessings on all of you. My friends, I am proud of your true Irish loyalty. Coach again. Be surrounded. Good evening, everyone. Well, good evening, Colonel. Captain O'Day, I believe. If you want to capture me, you'll have to fight for it. You'll have to kill the lot of his body before he let him make you. You'll all kindly be still and permit me to read a dispatch. I shall be most grateful. Lord Camden is recalled to the Lieutenancy of Ireland. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Hooray! Hooray! And Lord Cornwallis takes his place. Well, I hope he may be better. <laughs> he couldn't be worse than Camden. Lord Cornwallis has brought with him from the king a general pardon for all persons implicated in the late uprising. Oh, Barry, you're free. You're free. You're free indeed, Captain O'Day. My congratulations, sir. And now I shall withdraw and leave the Irish to celebrate. <laughs> Did you hear what he said, Barry, my lad? You're free. You're free as hell. Oh, 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 oh. oh, it is a great day. It is a dead it is. Uh, you're so right, Sean. It's a great day tonight for the Irish, for the cause we fought for and died. And the time is soon to be when you'll see old Ireland free. Tis the land of our love and our pride. We despise and defy our oppressors, and the tyrant laws we will fight. But as fast as they can make them, be God up, we can break them. Sure, the Irish have a great day tonight. Tis a great day tonight for the Irish, for the cause we fought for and died. And the time is soon to be when you see old Ireland free. Tis the land of our love and our Sure, the Irish have a great day to 
details are the story. Aileen and Barry had found themselves. Barry had been given his freedom. And they were young. And they were Irish. And the whole world belonged to them. And you know what happened after that, don't you? They lived happily ever after. As was the custom in those days. Cecil Keller will be with Jack in just a moment. And meanwhile, this is your host, Gordon McRae, giving a vote of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, Alan Reed, Eleanor Audley, Colleen Collins, and Ali O'Toole, for their fine performances in Eileen, with book and lyrics by Henry Blossom and music by Victor Herbert, and adapted for radio by Miss Jean Holloway. And now, here is Cecil Kellaway. Well, Mr. Kellaway, it was a pleasure and a privilege to have you on board tonight. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great pleasure to be with you, to appear with you and Miss Manning and Mr. Dennis. I'm looking forward to your performance next week of Rogers and Hammerstein picture, State Fair. Well, we're, we're looking forward to doing it, Mr. Kellaway. And our special guest will be Joe Stafford. And I guess a lot of you know that Joe and I made a lot of records together. And in addition to Joe, another surprise. Lovely Miss Martha Tilton will be aboard to sing... It might as well be spring. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. Eileen has been presented by special arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers, producers of My Dream is Yours, starring Jack Carson and Doris Day. This is Marvin Miller speaking. Friends, the president has set aside this month of March as Red Cross Month. During this one annual appeal, the Red Cross must raise funds to carry on its important work for the entire year. The Red Cross program for 1949 includes aiding in disaster, serving the armed forces, serving veterans, promoting health and safety, serving youth, and helping the unfortunate in all parts of the world. Remember, the Red Cross is a partnership of the people. You, too, can help in these troubled times through your Red Cross. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads, which are members of the Association of American Railroads. Each one of these railroads is an independent business with its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business, working by itself. But all of them work together for better service to you. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.